Greetings, everybody. Pastor Mark Biltz here with El Shaddai Ministries, and we're so glad you are able to join us for the celebration of the new month of ER. Yay! We're going to talk about the new moon for this month, and I want to begin with Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Why not begin at the beginning? God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The new moon, which is the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal dates on the biblical calendar. Why? Because without the new moon, we couldn't have any biblical holidays because we wouldn't know when they would be. So God created the moon specifically for the biblical calendar. The Bible, we also know, begins and ends with the tree of life. Listen to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Out of the ground, The Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, what do we find at the end of the book? In Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2, again, there's this beautiful river of a water of life. It's clear as crystal. It proceeds out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of its street, it says on this side of the river and on that was the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit every month. Imagine that, a different fruit every month of the year for 12 months. Well, guess what? That's not January, February, March, and April. This is referring to the biblical calendar. Again, this is what it's going to be like during the millennial reign. We're going to want to know when the new month begins. Well, during the millennial reign, listen to Ezekiel 46, verse 1. It says, thus says the Lord God. The gate of the inner court that looks toward the east is to be shut six working days. The six working days. But on the Sabbath day, it will be opened. And in the day of the new moon, it will be opened. Wow. During the millennial reign, we'll also be keeping the new moon, honoring every single month when it begins, according to the Messiah. Well, what would it be like after the millennial reign when there's a new heaven and a new earth? Well, listen to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. God says, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, will remain before me, says the Lord. So your seed and your name shall remain. And it will happen from one new moon to another. From one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. Wow. After the new heavens and the new earth are created, we're still going to be keeping the seventh day Sabbath. We're still going to be keeping the new moon. Wow. For eternity. We might as well get started now understanding what this is all about. As a matter of fact, in Psalms, 104. This is verses 19 through 21. It said, God made the moon to mark the seasons. What does that mean? The seasons. He's referring to the appointed times. He says, the sun knows his going down. You make darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and they seek their food from God. This is amazing. So listen to this. I mean, God made the moon specifically to know how to keep time according to the biblical calendar. So let's listen to Psalm 81, 
verse 3 and 4. God says, blow the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon for our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel and ordinance of the God of Jacob. Well, the two full moon feast days are Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, which each happen once a year. But the new moon happens 12 times, sometimes 13 times a year. And the Lord says to blow the shofar at the new moon. It's like we're calling out to him with the shofar, saying, we are obeying. We love you, Dad. So I'm going to blow the shofar here. Try to blow the shofar here. Yay, we did it. We blew the shofar. Hopefully you have one at home. You can blow it as well. Well, I tell you what. God asks us to blow the shofar at the new moon. Well, you know what? I have found out it really is all about God's covenant with King David. Listen to Psalm 89, verse 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him, with whom my hand will be established, my arm also will strengthen him. So here we see Psalms 89 is all about God's covenant with David. Now watch this. This is verse 23 and 24. I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him. I'm going to smite them that hate him, but my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. David's a Jew. Can you believe it? He's from the tribe of Judah. And listen to verse 28 and 29. God says, forever will I keep for him my mercy. My covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever in his throne as the days of heaven. And then look at this. This is Psalm 89, verse 33 through 37. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. His throne as the sun before me. It will be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Do you realize the sun and the moon are God's faithful witnesses in the sky to God's covenant with the Jewish people and specifically with the line of King David? As a matter of fact, in Jeremiah chapter 33, listen to verse 25 and 26. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I've not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, only then will I cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. Wow, day and night are still going, which obviously means God's covenant with Israel and the Jewish people are still going. In Exodus 12, 2, it says, this month is to be the beginning of your months. It will be the first month of the year to you. And that refers to Nisan last month, the first month. ER is now the second month. We just ended that first month. But God is saying, for my people, this is the calendar I want you to be on. Now, let's take a moment and jump into our prayer for the new moon. So if you're out there and you want to join us right now, let's stand and say the prayers for sanctification of the new moon together. Let's start with this first one here. May it be thy will, Lord, our God and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin. 
a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen. Together, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's host with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles, and they never missed their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews new moons. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Now, thank you. Let's talk a little bit about this month of Iyar. As I said earlier, Genesis 1.14, God had said he wanted to have lights in the firmament to divide the day from night, and he wanted them to be for signs, seasons, days, and years. And look at this. In Genesis 15.5, when God is making a covenant with Abraham, he brought him forth abroad, and he said, hey, look up now toward heaven. Why don't you start counting all the stars if you're able to? Count them. And he said to him, so shall your seed be. Wow, that's an awful lot of counting to do. Well, guess what? In the month of Iyar, it's the time to count. We have the counting of the Omer from the time of bringing the first fruits to the time of Shavuot. Well, I want to mention something to you. This comes from the Temple Institute and it talks about Aaron's breastplate, the high priest's breastplate. Every one of the 12 tribes was given a stone. And I want you to notice here that Issachar, which is assigned to the month of Iyar, the stone was a sapphire stone. So here I've got this beautiful sapphire stone, and we see the month of Iyar is the tribe of Issachar. The amazing thing, the Hebrew word for sapphire is also the same word as it means to count. Well, this is very important. Just as Issachar and Zebulun traveled together in the wilderness in their journeys, also they were connected in their blessings. Listen to this from Deuteronomy 33 verse 18 and 19. It says, of Zebulun, he said, rejoice Zebulun in your going out and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the people, the nations to the mountain. There they will offer sacrifices of righteousness for they, referring to Zebulun and Issachar, will draw out the abundance of the seas the hidden treasures of the sand. Well, guess what? Zebulun were the seafaring tribe, but they would work together with Issachar, who would find the hidden treasures in the sand, referring to all the hidden treasures within the Torah, and then Issachar would teach the Torah to Zebulun when they came back from their sea voyages. Now, in Genesis 49, listen to this. It talks about Issachar is to be a strong donkey lying down between the saddlebags. He saw a resting place that it was good, the land that it was pleasant. He bows his shoulder to the burden and becomes a servant doing forced labor. My goodness. Issachar's mission was to be a donkey. Just as a donkey transports people and merchandise from place to place, Issachar takes the Torah from place to place, uniting people with a common understanding of God's word. I think it is amazing. Here we are at Rosh Chodesh Iyar, 
which is the tribe of Issachar, represented by a donkey. But I want you to know it's Rosh Kodesh Er, not Eeyore. Wrong one. Just trying to be funny here. So, moving on, let's look at this. Er is also a month for healing. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to pray for someone who needs healing? This is a month for healing. Let me explain. In Exodus chapter 15, 24 through 26, the people are murmuring against Moses. And they said, what are we going to drink? And he cries out to the Lord. The Lord shows him a tree. He throws it into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them, and he said, If you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, do what is right in his eyes, and you pay attention to his commandments and keep all his statutes, it says, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So here on the PowerPoint, I have the way you spell the month of E-R, and I want you to notice the Hebrew phrase, I am the Lord who heals you. And guess what? The first letter of these three words together forms the word, the month of E-R. E-R is the month between redemption, Passover, and revelation, Shavuot. It connects them together. And many historically significant events took place during this month, which is why, let me mention this right here. I have it right here. If you get our biblical calendar, you can find out just when exactly on our calendar these epic historical events when they took place. This is why you want to get one of our calendars. But listen to this. I have right here. Uh, let me just show you this PowerPoint to begin with. Ezra began working on the rebuilding of the temple in the month of Eyar. On the first of Eyar was the first military draft of 20-year-olds and upward took place. On the second of Eyar is when Solomon also began the construction of the temple. On the 15th of Eyar, that is when they were murmuring and the quail falls that night. It's also the very same day the second Passover is to be kept if you can't keep it the first month. On the 16th of Eyar, that's when the manna falls for the very first time. On the 20th of Eyar, that's when the Shekinah left Sinai on a three-day journey after they had rested there for about a year. On the 21st of Eyar, that's when the double portion fell for the first time. On the 22nd of Eyar, that's when they dishonored the Sabbath looking for more manna. And then on the 24th of Eyar, they began murmuring again. And that very next day comes Amalek. Amalek, the attack of Amalek took place during the last week of the month of Eyar. And that tells us murmuring and complaining constantly will always bring an Amalek attack. This is why it is so important that we understand the times we're in because just like winter comes every winter, summer comes every summer, you're going to find the events in the Bible, they happen again in different ways and we need to be prepared for what's coming. So let me conclude with this. That is when not only Amalek came and fought with Israel, but it also is the month for the preparation of the receiving of the Torah. Can you see why Amalek attacked? Within two weeks, they're going to receive the revelation of the Torah on Mount Sinai. Sometimes we often think, why are we under such attack? I tell you why you're under such attack. God is about to give you some profound revelation. And this is why we need to humble ourselves. We need to repent and realize that this month, when we're counting up to the uh, event of Shavuot or Pentecost, we're going to be under attack. But guess what? We have the Lord who will heal you. We have the Lord who wants to comfort you. And he wants to reveal some great and mighty things out of his Torah.
So looking forward to seeing you this next Shabbat. It's going to be incredible. With that said, let's close with prayer. The priestly blessing. Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King, we just love you. And as you told Moses to tell Aaron to say this prayer over your people, you not only would bless them, but you would put your name upon them. As you told him to say, Ivarekaka Adonai Vaish Mareka, Yaer Adonai Panavileka Vihuneka, Yisa Adonai Panavileka Viasem Laka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Ayah Asher Ayah. Go in peace. Be blessed. See you on Shabbat.